Live from San Antonio, Mike Taylor. The great Johnny Moore. He is going to be on with us today as we talk to Johnny Moore. Need I say more? He's coming up next. It's also People I Want to Punch. Wednesday and major cowboy news have come down this morning, and that'll probably be our show, but let's get into it. Johnny's visit brought to us by Elite Collision. It is north of the rim off of I-10, locally owned and operated, the official collision center of Thunderdome, and this radio show and television show and Spotify cast, it is Elite Collision. If you've been in an auto accident, they are longtime Thunderdomers, and they want to take care of you. As I said, just 10 minutes past the rim right off of I-10, Exit 542, technically in Bernie. Longtime Poodle San Antonians, family owned and operated. Weekly appointments are available. They work with all insurances and do private pay, collision repairs, fender benders, paint jobs, hail damage. It is Elite Collision. When your car gets beat, call Elite. It is Mike Taylor. Let's get rolling. Ah, yes. Puma is here. DJ LG is here. And Sam, meet Johnny Moore. Good morning, Johnny. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. Thanks for having me. Good. So uh, what's your address? Where do you live these days? Okay, this is what he does to everybody. <laughs> so so uh, you don't you live mo- you're mostly in San Antonio, I'm assuming, right, John? Well, I'm in San Antonio, but uh, okay. uh, currently you know, I'm living in shirts. Okay, well technically that's shirts. Okay, very good, very good. Yes. So you do you still do you still go back up to Pennsylvania here and there just for stuff? You have to do well. Actually, I'm going back to Pennsylvania later on this week. Um, oh, okay. They they got one of the biggest three on three tournaments up there called the Hoop Fest. Uh, they'll have probably about between two and three hundred teams. I'll do that. I'll go back and uh, join the church, the, the people that are putting this event together, and then I'll have a little uh, little clinic for a couple of days on the court that I grew up on. Uh, it used to be the Booker T. Washington Center. It's now called the Don Witherspoon Community mm-hmm. Center. Okay, cool. Well, for, let me reset again. For those that don't know, this is the great Johnny Moore, Spurs legend, former Texas Longhorn great, and the head coach of the Alamo City All-Stars, too, who are our little buddies. We got to know uh, the guys that run Mexicana Restaurant, and those guys are involved with the Alamo City All-Stars. And, I felt like an awful San Antonian, Johnny, when I first met Adam, the guy that he, you know, he works with y'all and works at the restaurant. I started going into that restaurant. We just started striking up conversations, and I thought, wait a minute, the ABA is still around? Wait, we got team? <laughs> it's 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 ridiculous that I didn't even know that there was a team, but alas, there is, and you're coaching them. Johnny is the coach of the ABA Alamo City All Stars, and. Let's start right there because we're trying to find these boys a place to play. Um, they, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if the right phrase is y'all got kicked out of the Antioch Center. They just got scheduled in advance, and so the All Stars need a place to play. Let's start with, let's just start with this. First of all, you're Johnny Moore. What are you doing? Why are you? Co- Not that it's a bad league or a bad kids or anything. Why did you? You can do anything. Why are you coaching the Alamo City All Stars? Well, I just kind of paired up with. Uh... You know, some of the managing partners, uh, Coach Blacknall and Sharon Blacknall, it's, it's really their their baby, so to speak. And, you know, you you never can do anything by yourself. So, you know, I just paired up with them and try to utilize, you know, my experience and my knowledge and, uh, and to help them. You know, everybody can't play professionally as far as the NBA is concerned, but there's a lot of young guys who still have the desire to play basketball and this is the way for them to continue to try to advance their careers. And, you know, we've sent guys overseas to Mexico, uh, uh, over to Europe and all over the uh, world, actually, as a, as a result of, of their participation in this league. So it gives them an opportunity to continue to learn and grow. And, and I just want to, you know, be a part of that and, and help them continue to utilize and, uh, to realize, you know, their dreams. Well, so these are a bunch of younger kids. I'm, I'm there's probably, I was thinking, I mean, surely there's not some 35 year old dude out there with a big gut who played college ball 20 years ago and just he's hanging on. <laughs> you, you don't want guys like that on the team or, 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 or do you? Would you basically just describe me? You? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my, my meet Puma, he's about six foot five and he's about three foot in diameter. 
in some parts of his body, but others not. <laughs> others are bigger than others. Three foot might be a stretch. Yeah. But Sam played college ball up in Abilene, so I mean, I, again, are we, are we talking just guys doing it? But you're, you're trying to see, you're trying to get kids noticed, then go play in other leagues, right? Well, Primarily. of course, you know, yeah. these are guys who've come out of college. You know, I have a, a number of guy who has pro experience, who's played in South America, New Mexico. Uh, and, you know, I had players that played over in, in Europe, uh, you know, out of this league. You know, I sent a couple of players to the Harlem Globe Charters. So, mm -hmm. nope. So these are grown men. Uh, you know, the oldest one on my team this year, he was, I think, 33, maybe 34. But you know, he didn't have all that gut and all that going on. But, you know, he, <laughs> he, was, one of the, <laughs> he was one of the premier scorers in the league, yeah. you know. So, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's a good league. It's good family entertainment, and uh, you know to go out there. It, it's amazing because you know when I first started this, you know, a number of years ago, and I thought when the ABA merged that that was the end of the ABA, mm -hmm. but they have like mm, over the country they have about 170 teams. Dang. That's part of the ABA. Mm -hmm. now, now I really have to say that you know you know in my opinion we need to streamline that. You know what I'm saying? To so that we can get more more interest and in, and in, in even a higher quality of players out on the floor. Right. Well, maybe it's starting today in a goofball way with our little show. Maybe we can, because I, I, I honestly, I first of all, I didn't know you existed, and then I'm like, wait, you got Johnny to coach the team? Good lord! I don't. Th I think if people just knew that you were the coach, fans would just want to go just because just because you're the coach. So tell me what kind of coach you are. Are you one of these? Hard asses? Are you a player's coach? What, 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 what kind of coach does Johnny Moore if I sign up to play for the Alamo City All-Star? Well, I like to think that I'm a player's coach, uh, but I'm old school. Um, you know, you have to be self-motivated and you have to, you know, I mean, there are certain things that are cornerstones. You know, you have to have a, a high basketball IQ. You, you have to have a, a work ethic. And your attitude is always going to determine your altitude, how high and how far you go. So those are the cornerstones of, of what we do. And it's a combination of all those. You know, e even, you know, how we grown men get together and they're comfortable and they start talking about different things. And, you know, you always got to be aware that, you know, we're continuing to try to build a fan base and, and sponsorship support. So you got to be careful about how you present yourself. Mm -hmm. And somebody is always watching you know, I, I look at my guys sometimes and, you know, they're on the bench and I said, look, you know, y'all clowning over here. So the next step is get off the bench because, you know, that's a reflection of what we're doing. So we want we want to do things in a proper way. We want to be respectful. We want to be high energy, but we definitely want to be entertainment for, for the whole that you can bring your whole family to. All right. So how do we help you build a fan base? Because I don't, I'm not sure what kind of crowds y'all are getting. But how do we? How do? How, what can we do on this end? On this end to help it? Any ideas? Well, I think just you know shows like this and and just continuing to get the word out there. You know, just like you said, some people are like oh the ABA y'all still play? yeah yeah we're still playing and you know we've been here for a number of years and uh, and I saw one of the problems that we had we we started out in Universal City and we played at the Sportsplex and. We, we kind of moved around a little bit and it's, it's hard for us to maintain the fan. You know, we had developed a pretty good fan support, but then we moved. Mm -hmm. and so now to kind of recapture that, you know, it's been a little difficult, but you know, we'll, we'll get it done. But you know, I, I think that the, the main, the most important thing is the product that we put out on the floor. You know, first thing they want to say, now you, you know, no one can, can compare and to compete with the Spurs. So that's not what we do. So just so people understand, no, that's not what we sure. do. But, you know, we this is an, another aspect of basketball and enjoyment and entertainment that the people can take part of and, and actually be a part of the team. Yeah, Johnny, I know the ABA is keeping you busy these days, but you, you reference, you know, not competing with the Spurs. Uh, I'm sure you're just as excited as all of us are about uh, the Spurs big off season. And of course, led by Wimben Yama. Yeah, of course. You know, and it's funny because the whole process when they was going to the draft, I said, I said, we're going to get the Spurs again. You know, and if you look at it, you know, this would be like the third time we've got David Robinson in the lottery, Tim Duncan, and here we here are again. So, you know, I really think that three times going to be a charm again for us. 
And, you know, as young, as you see how the team was going the last few years, we haven't won a lot of games, but we had a lot of talented young players that, that now can be, you know, like, a, again, the cornerstones of, of, of what we're doing is in the rebuilding process. And, I mean, you, you, you got Popovich there, you know, and, and he's going to put the pieces together in, in a way to, to build this team in, in a proper way and, and start moving back toward that championship status. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're obviously hoping that happens uh, sooner rather than later, but it seems like the writing's on the wall. It's inevitable that they're going to get back there. Uh, You know, obviously, focus here in the backyard on the Spurs, but, you know, how much of the uh, rest of the league do you still keep up with or get to keep up with uh, mixing with your coaching duties and uh, the rest of your uh, personal time nowadays? Is there a young player that you look at and see – that's a guy that could have made it in our in my era. That's Johnny Moore Jr. There, <laughs> ain't too many of them. Who's your favorite? Because <laughs> <laughs> well, you few people have their name of the roster. Well, I mean, only seven players yeah. have had twenty assists in a playoff game. Well, that's so. true. Yeah. yeah, that's true. And uh, Johnny's yeah. one. So, who do you like there, around there the are, yeah. when, when I, Whenever I'm looking at the when I'm, when I'm looking at them, uh, the players nowadays. I see a lot more athleticism than, than in my day. Yeah. But one thing that, that I see that is really lacking is the knowledge of the game, knowing how to play the game and how to utilize your teammates. Uh, you know, all those things are things that, you know, I, I don't see it a high level of that today. Or you got a few few guards out there, you know, young guards who, who really know how to involve. You know, I take Jokic, for example. I mean, he, he even though he's seven feet tall or whatever, I mean, he handles the ball, he passes, he's developed every aspect of the game. You know, now it's like these guys, they just want to specialize, and, and the game has changed quite a bit. You know, once the game went global, it's more of a three-point game. You know, spot up, side pick and roll, front pick and roll, the rest of them spotting up, shooting threes. I mean, it's not like the old days where it was a lot more continuity where everybody was involved in every play, you know. So those are things that are different. Um, but, you know, the game really doesn't change. If you're going to be a real player, a position is just somewhere that you start from. You have to have the ability to, to do everything, pass it, shoot it, dribble it, play. And, and this isn't football. You can't play one end of the floor. you got to be able to play both ends of the floor. And I think that's that's one of the deciding factors of whenever you're looking at the talent of the, these young players today. How does the Spurs, you, we mentioned, Puma asked you about the Spurs earlier and your thoughts on them. How does the organization treat the old guys like yourself and guys that have come and gone and, but live in the area and stuff? Do you talk to guys that still work for the organization? I mean, obviously your number's in the top of the, of the dang building. So I'm assuming that Johnny Moore gets invites to parties and stuff now, or at least team functions here and there. Yeah. Well, I do, you know, and they've always been good about incorporating the former players who are in the mm-hmm. area. They've always been good about that. You know, we, we get season, we get some season tickets. We have like a lottery and you get a certain number of games that, you know, you get to come to. And, okay. and anytime I go down to the arena, you know, I can go to the game. You know, the, sure, I don't I even have so. to have a seat, to be <laughs> honest. You know what I'm saying? I can, I can go down. I can, you know, go yeah. to the sports bar. I can go to one of the suites, you know, where – that's you cool. know, a lot of still has relationships with a lot of the sponsors and stuff there. So, but you know, Spurs have been one of the franchises is kind of uh, in the forefront as, as far as incorporating their former players. Uh, you still keep up? I'm assuming you do. I was going to ask you about the Longhorns. You still keep up with them much? And if so, would I mean, what do you think about where they are now? Because it looks like they are getting back into the elite status again. And hell, Rodney Terry had a had a tough job last yes. year and handled it beautifully yes. and got the job full time. And I'm sure you're still paying attention to what's going on up at UT. Well, well I do, you know, and the Longhorns, they're going to be all right. You know, they continue to, to learn and grow. Uh, I think Roddy Terry, he did an excellent job. You know, I was very happy that they extended his contract and gave him that head position. I think that was appropriate. And I think he's going to continue to do a good job. You know, he's established himself, you know, in his his coaching staff. You know, they're very good in recruiting, and I think that that's going to continue to go forward. The great Johnny Moron with us, the coach of the Alamo City All-Stars. All right, you still 
How much do you play? You get out there and shoot it around still a little bit here and there? Uh, play? Uh, yeah. You know, you as a pro, yeah. no pay, no play. <laughs> <laughs> Basketball like mercenary. <laughs> love that. Let's man. not get that twisted. <laughs> oh, I love but, that, man. <laughs> but I, I do, you know, right For now, fun. you know, I'm finding myself, you know, along with that, you know, I have a grandson. He'll be six uh, in another week. Okay. And, you know, just to start to try to get him, you know, developing him, his hand and eye coordination and, and getting him to just see if he's going to develop a passion for the game. He seems to like it. But, you know, so, you know, I've been working with him and, you know, that, you know, with my teaching at school, you know, I don't have a whole lot of time to get too involved and see too many games and all that. But, you know, I still keep my eyes open, you know. And mm-hmm. I mean, it's good that we have the social media and things of that nature that, you know, I'm able to kind of keep up with what's going on. All right, sir. I know you're a busy man. Probably doesn't, don't have to be, but you do stay busy. And I'm glad you do. And it's cool that. We got a chance to talk to you and meet you at least this way. I and mean, we'll see you at the gym because I think you've gotten some, well, you damn sure got some some new fans in, in this show because of our affiliation now with Adam and those guys trying to help you all find a place to play. So I know we'll find a good good spot for you, and I'd like to shake your hand in, per, in person one of these days as soon as I can. Thank you, Johnny. I appreciate it. I'll look forward to that. And thank, thank you for you, having me. Thank right. you, Coach. All right. The great Johnny Moore. All right. About that. Pop made some comments the other day when they re-signed Mamu Mamu Skittish that, That's it. And Pop was like, no offense to the American kids, but the Euros coming here coached up. I mean, he didn't say it in those exact words, but that's what he meant. That was the gist yeah, of The it. Euro kids come in here ready to play in all phases. And the, Johnny just alluded to it. Yeah, they might not be able to jump 42 inches on a vertical. What's it matter? But... Doesn't matter. If They're going to make the right pass correct. 80% of the they time. They can make shots and make free throws and they can play D. And they can make a bounce stuff. pass on a back cut. Yeah, they can do that. <laughs> Minor things. Minor things. When most kids come out of high school, they don't know what the hell that is. They got to be taught everything from scratch. All right, we need a gym. And we need, we need sponsors for the broadcast. The Alamo City All-Stars want me and Puma to do their games. But like Johnny just said, <laughs> no pay, no play. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get that twisted. That's right. Let's not get that twisted uh, like cut in, in, in order for Puma, so in order for them to be able to get a stream into their games this year, they need sponsorships. And in order to have guys that are going to go in there and call their games, they need to be able to at least give us some hot dog money. We're not asking for Johnny Moore money, but a little hot dog money might be cool here and there. All right, so that's really cool. Appreciate the guys at the All Stars and. Mexicana restaurant for getting us in touch with Johnny. It ain't every day you get to talk to a spur whose number's in the top of the of the roof, and that's pretty badass. So thank Come you. On, that's All right. <laughs> Speaking of needing sponsors, uh, my boys at the soccer club, they need sponsors too. Uh, absolutely they do. It is San Antonio City Soccer Club, the official soccer club of Mike Taylor Live. We are looking for people to put their name on the fields up there, beautiful fields. Matter of it's fact, the most beautiful fields. Everyone thinks yeah, so. Everyone Everyone's says saying it. they're beautiful. I'm actually going to go up there. I've seen them on the phone, my cell phone. I've seen videos, but I'm going to go up and take a look Friday. If you want to go, nice. Yeah, I'm done. I'm going to go up there and tour the tour the place and see what we're see what we're getting ourselves into or what we've already gotten ourselves into. Uh, but I, if we're going to be impressed, it's beautiful fields that they just spent two million bucks on the club building. And now trying to get some sponsorship money into that and back into that place because, you know, it's for kids, but you can't have nothing but outgoing money. They need to be able to balance that out. And that's why we're trying to get people to put their names on these soccer fields. There are eight of them up there that need names as we speak. It is San Antonio City Soccer Club, one of the longest running, most successful soccer clubs we got right now. 1,500 kids. And if you are interested in becoming a sponsor, hit me up. Jump into my DMs or shoot me an EM at Mike Taylor Show uh, at gmail.com. We want to talk to you about putting your company's name all over the place. You'll get name, your name on the field and banners and entrance signs and such, but you'll also get mentioned on their websites, our website. I will mention you on our show all the time. I will mention you on my social media. So it is the San Antonio City Soccer Club. I liked what Johnny said. Altitude determines you. Oh, no. Attitude determines your altitude. There you go. I like it. All right. We got big cowboy news to get into. 
here in a minute, and this is not good, potentially, but it's also Wednesday, and if the only I, there are a few people that would delay the start of people I want to punch. You get your number retired by the Spurs, okay, you get to delay people I want to punch. So let's get into it belatedly. It is people I want to punch Wednesday. Who do we all want to punch and why? Um, I am going to punch a dude I'd never even heard of until the other day. Are you familiar with Zach Aldridge at all? No. Not LaMarcus, <laughs> Zach. <clears throat> Don't think there's any relation. Zach Aldridge is some, some person who works on something called CBS Sports Headquarters. Oh, I've CBS got Sports nothing for HQ. you. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, it's a TV show. Uh, on oh. the CBS Sports Network, I guess. Yeah, this is uh, this is the network that finally UTSA got out from underneath when they left oh, Conference USA. Oh, is that what USA. that was? Yes. Okay, so some spare ass fledgling. Remember, garbage. that's where we were watching like the conference championship <laughs> game with Houston Nutt as the <laughs> studio analyst. <laughs> okay, bottom of the barrel. Okay, now, and I remember now. I had forgotten about that. Well, so for some reason. Avery Johnson was on there this week, and they had something called uh, Zach Aldridge. And he went on there and was ranting about how boring it is for the NBA that Victor Wambanyama is a spur and how that's just boring that he's going to be with them. And Avery was on there, and AJ took his ass to task in a joking manner, but basically said they should not renew your contract. Told the dude, <laughs> Avery told this dude point blank to his face, they shouldn't renew, they, I, I wouldn't give you an extension if I were the bosses here uh, at CBS. Or, or as Rex <laughs> Ryan, it, it as Canelo once said, or as Rex Ryan once said, I wouldn't pay this turd. <laughs> once again, man, I mean, I didn't even know this. I saw, I saw this snippet run across my timeline. And, you know, it, it's funny that AJ took the guy to task, but I just, what a, it's 2023, man. Can we, can we, it's stupid. And I don't normally address it, but I'm just, I'm a little touchy right now because we do have Wimby, you know, and I, I've maintained forever that if the exact same players, exact same head coach, exact same philosophy had been doing all this shit all these years in Los Angeles or New York or Chicago or Miami, Imagine if all these same guys had played for the Knicks and Pop had been the coach of the Knicks all this time. They'd have a goddamn st statue of Pop outside Madison Square Garden now. Oh, the league office would have financed three uh, documentaries to, to, no, no to question. tell the story of the whole yeah, I know. organization. They, they, might the name, whole they might just take Red Arbach's name off the coach trophy and put Pops on it. I mean, imagine if, this, if all these same players and coach had been the, the Lakers all these years. Sure. They'd have taken the 405 by now and renamed it the 21 after Timmy. So get the fuck out of here with the board. Get the fuck out of here with the get board. The fuck out of here. It's 2023. So you know what? Fuck you, Zach Aldridge. And I hope the Spurs win the title in the next two years and you're bored to death by having to watch it. So kiss my ass. Another one of these assholes because we have, sorry, I'm about to get mad. We get we, all this fucking media we have in this country now because of how big, the, how, how things have changed and technology Every swinging dick now can have a podcast <laughs> or a write a column. Let it swing. Or write a column. Every anybody can anybody. You anybody. We're we're, we're writing. Mike Taylor anybody. Junior, second base. <laughs> There's so much media. It's so broad, which means the talent pool gets watered down. And so you get assholes like that on spare ass networks telling me how boring the Spurs are after all these years in 2023. When we all know that son of a bitch has probably never stepped foot in this town, never even been to a game, rarely watches them because he's got his head up the big market team's ass. He thinks that's basketball, so punch Zach Aldrich. Mm, let's see. Who are you punching this guy? It feels like the huh. it feels like the <laughs> San Antonio is boring trope. It's kind of just like a rite of passage. It just, it's just—it's like it's when just these guys part of the water. Yeah, now, you, now. You, he's in the seat. He knows the line. He, it's almost like he's state-sponsored television. Like yeah, he's, he's got it's to, just what you said. I've, I've got to say it. I'm here. Like we're talking San Antonio. Yeah. I've just got to say they're boring. It's, it's what Putin I've, wants. I've got to support the liberals. It's what Kim Jong wants, or that, yeah, yeah or the other. Uh, uh, no, I. This is going to be a. Very painful punch for myself. This one's going to hurt. I got a punch. 
Rangers top five prospect, Jack Leiter. <gasps> oh, is he being an asshole like his dad? No, it's... <laughs> well, being a douche? Uh, I would be fine if he was just being an asshole and a douche uh, like his dad. Al Leiter was a douche. Because that would mean he's performing at about a uh, number three level uh, spot in the rotation uh -oh, at the major oh, league Bubba, level. No. What happened? Of course, right as the, and this is all on the heels, you know, last night the Rangers finalized a contract with their first round pick from this most recent draft a couple weeks ago, last week, Wyatt Langford, the outfielder out of Florida, paid him, uh, I think like $8 million, over slot, 300000 over slot, got the deal done, right? Everyone's mm -hmm. excited. Mm -hmm. Two years ago when they drafted Jack Leiter, they gave him $9 million. Mm -hmm. There were only four. Four other prospects in that draft that got paid over five million dollars. Okay, so they way overpaid. Basically, I think they gave him like one point two million over slot because he's Jack Leiter. He's Al Leiter's kid. He's stud at Vanderbilt. Everything's sure. gonna be fine. Sure, where he's gonna be in the he's gonna be in the majors in two years. By the time we're gonna spend all this money on free agents, we're gonna be contenders. Jack Leiter's gonna be the back. He's gonna be the David Price. Uh, back end of the bullpen piece or swing starter uh, for the Rays like Price was when he was a rookie. Well, Jack Leiter's sitting at Frisco with a 551 ERA. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to tell me he wants more money. No, right. no, he's just... He just sucks. He just sucks. <laughs> he just has been an absolute bust. Last year, he had a 553 <clears throat> ERA yeah. at Double A. Through 15 starts this year, he's 2-5, 553 ERA, Opponents are hitting like 235 off of him. I mean, not lighting him up, but he's obviously not getting out. He's not close to the big leagues. He's not anywhere close to the big leagues. And he's arguably been passed by three other prospects. And all of this, I'm not necessarily upset that he's not ready to be in the big leagues yet. But the bigger issue is, did you see Buster Olney's report yesterday? No. He reported, suggested, that the team that has been most active in the Otani trade talks so far mm -hmm. have been the Texas Rangers. Hmm. So maybe if a guy like Jack Leiter had a little bit more fucking trade value right now, <laughs> maybe this deal could actually get done and Otani could be a Ranger. Well, so look, man, punch well, Jack Leiter fine. for worsening his trade value and potentially keeping the Rangers from getting Otani. That's good. They can't all. They're not all going to pan out. No, not, not but, everybody's going to live up to their to their talent level. It happens. It's baseball. But as you said, three guys have passed him. The Rangers are a first base, first place ball club. They're kicking the Rays' ass this week. God, the what five in a row now? Yeah, out just of the imagine if Leiter were good, and the, the Rangers yeah. are already good, <laughs> yes. and now about to add badass new stud Jack Leiter. But apparently, he's got his head up his butt. How old is he? He's a kid. Uh, he's yeah, 25? but he's uh, twenty three still. Right. He's young. Give it a year. Well, I mean, we gave it a year. And, oh, okay. Well, give it another. And year. Now let's give it another year. <laughs> and you know, Kumar Rocker's uh, shoulders falling off his yeah, body. That's and unfortunate. He's going to be out a year. Degrom out for a year and a half. Otani not only leads the majors in home runs, he now leads the majors in triples. Fuck that guy, I think he's man. Second God in strikeouts almighty. too, right? He's top as five a pitcher. In, as a pitcher. Yeah, not yeah. as a hitter. Yeah, yeah. It's un. I don't. I don't. I'm out of superlatives. You, he's the greatest baseball player who has ever lived on earth. No question. That's all I got. That's it. That's, and and it's not. It. It's at this point. You know, usually this is where... And you're right. There is no question. There's no so question don't argue anymore. with us over that. Like you're wrong. It's over. It's, like over. it's over. It's over. If you were... If the aliens were to come down <laughs> and you needed to pick one baseball player throughout <laughs> the entirety of the league's history... Yes. For one game... Correct. You're picking Otani. You are. And it's not even close. And he's pitching and hitting it's, third. He's, he's always pitching and leading <laughs> off. Right. Because you want him to uh, so get as many at-bats as possible. <laughs> right. No, it's crazy. And, and it's... I mean, not to turn this into a full baseball segment, but I'm it's going all right. to. It's, it's all right. The, it's the most interesting trade negotiation I can think of in my lifetime because he's not locked down. Mm -mm. He's on a, this is a contract year. Yeah. He's a free agent at the end of the year. All reports are suggesting he wants to be a Dodger. The Dodgers have freed up $700 million available 
cash to use in the offseason to just sign him. Yeah. So no matter where he's traded to, yeah. the Dodgers are going to have the payroll available to just sign him. Yeah. They've they've staggered contracts where they've got a bunch of expiring payroll. They're going to offer him 700, 800 million dollars. So if you're a team like the Rangers, if you're a team like the Cardinals or some of the other names that have been floated out there that are at least had conversations that are interested. Mm-hmm. How much are you? How much of your farm system are you willing to give up for a three month rental? Without not, any, not a ton. Not if he's going to go to the, the National League. Best baseball yeah. player to ever walk the face of the earth. And he if, is. If you're the Rangers, but twenty four guys that you need to win the title. But if you're if you're a first place team like the Rangers, you've. I mean, granted, the Degrom injury changes things significantly. If Degrom was healthy, I'd say mortgage everything and pair Degrom and Otani because that's an unstoppable playoff rotation. But without without Degrom at the top end, you're giving up. Are you going to give up your literal top five, top six prospects for three months of Otani and one not. run at a World Series? I'm concerned, I mean, especially after, as we're sitting here talking about Jack Leiter, former top to pick who now can't get an out at double a you don't know i mean is is owen white gonna pan out is evan carter the real okay, deal now you're getting too deep range of baseball yeah player. i'm looking it's the top five prospects See, I'm my just saying, glazing, my eye, now i'm glazing well, over. well that's what i'm saying like how much <laughs> how much of that are you willing to give up not all for that, the no. greatest player of all time not for three months not a, not unless i have a contract extension also that he's going to agree to all right um i'm a texan i'm a proud texan i don't always like what texas does but we're a big state you know i don't like everybody i don't like all the things my kids do but i still love texas no matter what's thrown our way texans have a way of not only surviving but rising above old school old-fashioned family value texans Call it determination. We've got a heart of mighty oak. We survive the torrential winds of hurricanes that sweep the coastal bend. We provide shade and shelter to those in need. We need firm values that we stand true to, knowing that our legacy will be passed down from generation to generation. Live Oak Baca is inspired by that culture and that landscape of South Texas, but the very trees that accent our family ranches and rural cities down there you know, I work for Live Oak Baca now, paying witness to the lives that have worked this land for a long time. Live Oak Baca, Coastal Bend based in Beeville, near Corpus Christi, Texas, the official vodka of Thunderdome. It is Live Oak Baca. You can find Live Oak Baca just about anywhere in San Antonio, including the official bar of this show, McFinnigan's. So next time you're at McFinnigan's or anywhere in town, tell them and you're in the mood for vodka. Mix it with Live Oak Vodka, the official vodka of Thunderdome. All right. I'll be at McFinnigan's later today at 5 o'clock drinking Live Oak Vodka. Oh, doing the live chat? Yeah, I'm going to do that, and I think I'm going to do what LG told me I need to do. I'm going to, at 5 o'clock, I'm going to go on Twitter and pull up Twitter Live, provided that I can remember how you showed me how to figure out how to do it. <laughs> provided. <laughs> hey, someone, Twitter will. Someone there, someone at McFinnigan's will know how. Sure. You'll be fine. I get one of the young, You'll be fine. one of the bartenders. Can show yeah, me the, one of these. Yeah. Someone, how old are you? Someone 20? under thirty. Get yeah, come here. here. <laughs> <laughs> Call me when you're this many. Okay. So I'm going to do a Twitter chat for about ten minutes from five to five ten, and then I'm going to say bye Twitter. And at five ten, I'm going to switch over and go to Instagram Live from five ten to five twenty. I'm going to do ten minutes and talk about whatever. And then at 5.20, I'm going to switch over to my, my, my Facebook page and go live from there. So I'm going to do an all streams Twitter, Facebook, Instagram chat today starting at 5 from McFinnigan. Here's where Winners. you need one of those, like, uh, you need, like, one of those triple phone setups so you can just go live on, like, all of them at the same time. Oh, that'd be boom, cool. Boom. Yeah, there you go. Well, what if I have my phone here and my laptop here? That'll work. That's, I, can do, I can do a twofer. Yeah, what time go. are you opening up the fax line? <laughs> like, what... Or when do you get answer all the questions from the carrier pigeons? Yeah, leave or, me a leave me a leave me a voicemail on the phone. Yeah, I'll get send, to you tomorrow. Send me a letter today, and I'll I'll <laughs> open them all next week. So no, if, if, if you want to participate in this show, whether it's live chats or talking to Johnny Moore or me and Puma shooting the shit or whatever we do, please like and share and subscribe and become a member of our thing. Uh, it's only six bucks a month on YouTube to become a member of this show. Um, subscribe to it for absolutely free. Tell all your buddies we're on this thing. I want this show to do well. So far, so good. Five weeks in, we're doing okay. Like, share us, 
Get I've a got a lot better just YouTube and then get up on that member. Have get you one of them. Better. Get you one of them memberships. All right, all right. Can we change the sounder when we get a new member? Does it mess you up? No, 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 no. We, just, we can customize that to whatever you want. Baby. I just, I, yeah. I'm going to propose something okay. every time we get a new member. Okay. Just imagine. Okay. Okay. Johnny Moore became our newest member. You're in love with that. I do love the gong. I'm fine with it. I was going to scare the shit out was, of me every that's time. That's why I kind of like it. We could it, do it so for a little bit. It it's, makes a, us, it's a little distracting. I was raised on the gong show, and that makes me it makes me feel like a kid again. It's pretty loud, man. Uh, let's do it for a little bit and see how, Is that see that how long it takes. that stupid show that Mike Myers tried to resurrect? Yes, that's, oh, that would God. be correct. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you don't fuck with the gong show. No, the gong show love is that. iconic. It also had uh, quite a bit of... Uh, Sexual references for yeah. the, the 70s. Era. It was the yeah. 70s. Well, and re rewatching it in the late 80s, early 90s as a kid, you know, the girl that would get out there and just randomly eat different types of fruit. Sure. Until she got to the horde of bananas at the end well, of the it's stage. still going on today. <laughs> it's great. I like, learned a lot from the gong show. We, look, look, men, we, we, it's. Sex is still a very huge thing in our society. We just passed the 8 billion human mark. People like to screw, and we're made that to screw. Checks out. We're, we're put on this earth to, re, to reproduce and procreate. Water, oh, no, oxygen, water, food, nookie. That, that's, the big, that's the big four. We don't, without those, there's no world. There's no us. It's called cocaine. And, cocaine. and I like how the millennials and the Gen Zers have changed the vernacular, I guess, or the nomenclature, I guess, of all this stuff. It's just it's not it can't, it's not a slut or a whore sex worker. No, you're talking <laughs> sex worker. A sex worker is so on. There's absolutely still <laughs> sluts and whores. I, you address sex it, workers think, yeah. are the ones that get paid. Okay, because it's actual but I'm work. Just saying, that's just an example what do we get of how. For $10? That's an it's example. Sex just because we've changed how we look at it, we still like to fuck. Now I don't. I don't. I'm not with like toxic masculinity, which is a new phrase I've learned to in the last five years from you people. Sure. Uh, shit, everything I was taught apparently was toxic. I was like, kind of like Darren Woodson. I don't even know how to tackle anymore I mean, without getting the penalty. You're telling me the teenage girl <laughs> eating popsicles on the gong show is wrong? Get the fuck, fuck out of me. That's bullshit. <laughs> what, well, come on. <laughs> yeah, so that's, this fake modesty and fickleness is bullshit. Look, I'm pro, I, I was pro the Me Too movement. We need to get all of the real perverts out of the, out of the, out of the mainstream. But let's not but lose sight of the that, fact that fucking yeah, fun. Let's, yeah. All right? Fucking's fun and fucking's for everybody. Put, put that on a t-shirt. Fucking's you. fun <laughs> <laughs> fucking's and for, for everybody. everybody. If it ain't feeling good, it ain't doing good. All right, we got big cowboy news here, potentially. No one told oh. me. This has just come down this morning. Adam Schefter, the first to report this for Mickey.com. Now, Todd Archer, who covers the Cowboys for Mickey Dallas. Oh, now it's real, this. then. Dallas Cowboys six-time All-Pro and team captain Zach Martin is considering not reporting to training camp because of his unhappiness with his contract and the team's lack of interest in restructuring it, sources have told Adam Schefter this morning. Now, wow. Why would they be why would they have a lack of interest in restructuring? Don't ask him. It's Zach Martin, you do what the fuck he asked That's you it. to do right That's now. It. What are we talking about? And he's he's given up money multiple times already. He's pushed multiple times. He's pushed uh back end extensions where his money's not going to come in the season that he's playing. It's right. gonna come later down the line. Why are why are you even you're talking extension with Terrence Steele, but you won't entertain it with Zach Martin? Right, they are talking extension with Sybil Ozone, Terrence Steele. They're talking a 50, potentially a $50 million well, this extension. this is where you call Terrence to say, hey, um, Bubba, we yeah. got to take care of Zach first. We'll get to you tomorrow. We'll get to you in eight months. According to this, sources have told ESPN Martin believes he is, quote, woefully underpaid relative he to the is. market. He's the best player at his position. He plays a premium quality position. He ain't no fucking cheap-ass spare running back. He's a legit football player that is hugely important to the Cowboys, obviously, especially a year in which the offensive line is in some flummox. And because of that, that's the reason why Terrence Steele stands to make big money out of this because they need guys. Says Martin is scheduled to make about $7 million less this season than the NFL's top paid guards. That's, that's bullshit. Yeah. Chris Lindstrom of the Falcons and Quentin Nelson of the Colts are the top at that list that average about $20 bucks a year. Last season marked the sixth time that Martin was named All-Pro First Team and at age 32 was among the most highly productive players in any position. 
He gave up only three sacks on a 96% pass block win rate last year, eighth best in the league. His 74% run block win rate was also top 10. Cowboys and Martin's representatives had brief discussions at the Combine in February about reworking his deal. In March, the Cowboys restructured Martin's contract That's for the I fifth thought. straight year yeah. for the fifth straight year to help create salary cap space. Uh, Martin is signed through 2024. As a result of all the restructurings, Martin's cap pick, his cap figure next year tops 23 million bucks. They got to pay him at some point, but he wants it now, and it's time to pay him. Well, it would this make- is a this is the timing of this is not good with all these other kids. They got to get re-signed. It wouldn't make sense, though, if you're already staring at a $23 million cap hit next season. I mean, are you – there's two lines of thought, I would <clears> say. <throat> if you're considering – if you're ready to move on from Zach Martin after this year, mm-hmm. I can understand why you're not but scared. Not. But they're not. You can't They're be. in no position they have no to choice be. choice exactly. to keep him. Yeah. I would understand if that was the case, yeah. why you're not scared of the $23 million cap hit next season. But they need to make all plans for Zach Martin to be a part of the roster right. next season. Period. So why would you not look to spread that $23 million cap hit out over the next two years after that? What did you say? He's 33? I mean, he, he 32. is. 32. 32. I mean, he's not but the Zach elite. Martin, but still top 10. I would yes. say a fringe elite at this point. Because, I mean, he's sitting outside the Wait, top five. He's, on, got a, he's top five at right guard. I'd say there's only 32 starting right guards. And that's got to be in the top. He's right there. But I mean, the numbers you just rattled down, he was what? Eighth in eighth and run eighth and pass block win rate and eighth and run block win rate. So he's somewhere right there on that. He's closer to five than he is one at this point. And exactly. That's still a dominant force on your offensive line unit that, I mean, he's, he's still the leader of that unit. You can't, There's no reason for them to be entertaining the idea of allowing him to hold out. Get this done and then worry about Terrence Steele. Then worry about C.D. Lamb. Then worry about Trayvon Diggs. Absolutely. You cannot tell Zach Martin, you're just going to have to play through this or we're moving on. You're not in a position to do that. No, you're not. So at this point right now, this the offensive line they want to have at left tackle, they want the kid from Fort Worth they drafted last year, Tyler Smith. At left guard, who is it? Who's playing left guard? It's a competition. It's a competition. It's uh, open. Tyler Beatish is the center, but he's and he's only, on a he's contract. Pretty here. good. Was it Kyle Farniak? They like him as a backup center. Yeah, but he's a project still. And then at right guard, they obviously, like Josh Ball you've got too. Zach Martin at right guard, and then at right tackle, they're going to run Tyron Smith to right tackle this year because he's gotten older and slower. But if that doesn't work out, I think they're still willing to move Tyron back to left tackle, slide Tyler back to left guard, and then let Terrence Steele start at right tackle. But Steele's coming off blowing his damn knee out, and he's going to need some more time. And the timing of Zach Martin now being like, "Hey, you know, I." Uh, I want a new contractor. I'm not going to training camps. Not great. Now, does Zach Martin need to be in all of training camp in order to be ready and play at the same caliber by opening day? No. That being said, though, they need to give that guy his money. There period, could be a, right now. There could be a blessing in disguise element to it. A 32 year old holding out half a training camp, Maybe. getting the well, back in two weeks of work yeah. in, and, and he's fine. And this, according to this report, they started talking about this back in February. Clearly, he's pissed. The, yeah, that's he thought in February. Okay, cool, we'll get it done now because I'm Zach Martin, and here we are now, two weeks well, out of training camp, and he's like, "Uh, fuck that, I'm not going to camp then." The timeline: February they, they talked about it. March they restructured, right? And then so from March to here, they haven't. I mean, they restructured because they had to get all of For their moves year. under the cap, right? Before the, I mean, that was when they were cutting Zeke and freeing yeah. up all that money to even be able to find dra- or sign draft picks. Zach Martin is the most, he is the captain of that room. He is the stud of that room. For him to create a little controversy here by his agent floating this to the media hawks, that tells me he's pissed. Yeah. That tells me he feels like they've screwed him over it tells here me since like, March. It tells me he feels like they've probably gone back on their word. He ought to go get his own podcast and just go on his own. It seems to be a... Uh, it's a thing. seems to be a trend these days. 
I tell you, the more I see other people do it, the better I feel about right. our decision. Or at it, least there's at more least, dumbasses in the boat with yeah, us. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> at least, either one, we're not we're not as dumb as we thought we were, or sure. two, we're geniuses. Look at everybody else following suit. Or it's mass suicide. Or it's mass suicide. We'll or it's somewhere in the in between. <laughs> All right, it is absolutely a solid deal at R and R Auto Glass. That is a place that will never. I'll never hold out. I'll never look. Never quit you R and R. There'll never be a holdout. We'll never restructure. It is a beautiful relationship. Our show and R and R Auto Glass, the official auto glass repair company of Mike Taylor Live. They take all insurances, so it does not even matter which one you have. They will accept it. Now, you probably not some Bolivian fake insurance, but if it's an American accredited company, they're going to take your insurance at R and R Auto Glass right there by the airport at 281 in Tacoma. And do not forget the Taylor Especial. Mention me and get yourself a hookup from R N R Auto Glass. We have a development here. In the Tupac Shakur murder investigation. What? No one told me. Dude, it's a news day. This has just come down. The Associated Press is reporting this from Las Vegas. What, Tupac charged with another case of sodomy? Or No, he was seen begging on a street corner next there to... There it is. No, I'm just kidding. Delonte West. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Thought you were going to say Elvis or... Las Vegas police have confirmed that they have served a search warrant this week in connection with the long unsolved killing of Tupac Shakur. Really? Oh. Enough evidence to get a search warrant? Propelling the case back into the spotlight nearly 30 years after his death. Shakur, one of the most prolific figures in hip-hop, was gunned down the night of September the 7th, 1996 at a drive-by in Vegas. He was 25. No arrests have ever been made. Yet, attention on this case, which has seen its share of conspiracy theories, has endured for decades. The Vegas Metro cops have said in a statement today that the search was conducted Monday in a town called Henderson, which I think is just outside well, of right Vegas. right outside, yeah. But the LVPD has not said whether or not a suspect's been identified. And it's unclear at this point what the hell they were looking for, but they, it was enough to compel them to go get a search warrant 30 years after oh, the kid got murdered. It was enough to compel a judge to sign off on said search warrant. Right. So citing, it has to be something. Citing the ongoing investigation, department spokesperson Aiden Ocampo Gomez said in a brief call that he couldn't provide more details on this development in the case. Nevada does not have a time limit for prosecuting homicide cases. So they they either got a tip. I'm I'm assuming they got a tip. I don't think they have a cop. <laughs> Highly unfortunate. Talking about. I'm assuming that some cop didn't just. He's not investigating this murder day in and day out. Still, they I can't got imagine. they got a tip. Yeah, and they followed up on it and thought, whoa, this is a good tip. So for you whippersnappers that like all this shitty rap and all this shinny hockey today that calls itself rap. There's room for all of it. Tupac got blown away sitting in the passenger seat with that fucking thug, Suge Knight, who used to run Death Row Records, who's locked up for life at this point because he ran over a guy in the parking lot of Roscoe. Minor Judge. detail. <laughs> Very minor detail. <sighs> a Cadillac. All they've ever been able to determine in the murder was that a white caddy sh pulled right up next to them. They were following them at the red light and just pumped that car full of bullets. What were they? They were in like a black Beamer, right? Or yeah. a Mercedes? Oh, Beamer. A Beamer. Whatever black happened to Beamer. that? I think that car is somewhere. It's, I think it's you can been see it. auctioned off multiple times. It's been redone and sold to, fe to people, which is weird. And Tupac hung on for about six days before he finally died. It was the second time he got shot. You know, it, Tupac was convinced that that damn Sean P. Diddy Combs who changes his name every six months. You talk about rebranding. Tupac was convinced that when, when Tupac got shot in a ball sack outside of a bar in New York or something like that a couple of years prior. Remember, Tupac was up there. It was in the middle of his rape trial. <laughs> uh, gangsta rap got out of hand in the 90s, uh, y'all. <laughs> I believe you're referring to the sodomy <laughs> trial. 
it was it was it was a hardcore time in the '90s. So although it's gotten way worse the last couple of years too, though it's, there's a renaissance it's, of rappers murdering uh, each other. It's it's not a straight line. There's ebbs and flows to sure. the rap game. Yeah, and I think the reason why so many rappers now get murdered is because there's so many of them because of the internet. So many kids are able to. I'm just going to pull up my Instagram and do some rapping, and people are like, "Wow, that kid's pretty good." So we get a lot of rappers now. Anyway, Tupac was doing a, a sodomy charge in New York and while he was your cock up her ass. <sighs> while he was waiting while he was living in New York during this whole time for him he got shot in the ball sack outside of a restaurant or a bar or something damn near bled out from that lost a testicle and had to change his name to one pox oh there it is that's the only reason <laughs> but, but then he held a grudge ever since and he was convinced that uh, that Biggie Smalls and Sean Combs had something to do with him getting shot, and then all of a sudden he gets murdered. And then, what, six months later, Biggie got murdered? Mm-hmm. That was so out of hand. And I remember then being young young Mike who liked all that shit. What year was it? 94? 95? Something okay, like that. Yeah, I think 94. Yeah, yeah. Didn't Tupac die the same year that Kurt Cobain did? Yeah. Yeah. One Pac and co- Kirk Cocaine died the same year. Oh it was a tough God. year. Tough year. <laughs> tough year. And I, I remember thinking, that's, I'm going to stop listening 96. to rap for a little while. 96. I'm going to quit listening to rap for a little while. These kids are out of control. They need to get this back together. And then, then, it, then it was pretty peaceful for a while. Well, it turned into club rap for a while. Like, there wasn't nearly as much beef yeah. rap that was going mainstream. A lot of the mainstream stuff was like... You know, to the window, to the wall type of shit. Sure. <laughs> like, and then the Texas Yang boys blew up over in Houston. Yeah. And the Houston scene blew up, and that helped things, too. Anyway, so a development in the Tupac Shakur murder case as Las Vegas PD served a search warrant Monday in Henderson, Nevada, but they're not saying what the hell they were doing and what's the deal. I just think they got a tip, probably. And it's a legitimate tip. But which it would shock me, though, if the murderer was still living in the Vegas area. Or I would, I that wouldn't even have thought he was me. from Vegas, though. That would he was a shock me if he, yeah, hitman. because don't. Okay, I mean it is Vegas. It's a bunch of fucking gangsters. I was about to, well, not yeah. even gangster, but could you, of all the places to carry out hits, like being a hitman in Vegas would probably be like the ten year old going to Disney World, right? Like, doesn't that just seem like the kind of place yeah. that you would? Yeah, make pretty good money being a hitman. If you're a gangster and a hitman, and you want to do a bunch of gangster shit, Vegas is probably a pretty good town to be in. So, so, like, so yeah. I mean, I so can we'll understand why someone fun. might stay around if they were so in that line of business. Certainly a uh, certainly a uh, case, a, a situation, a development that this show will continue to uh, exclusively follow here on Mike Taylor Live, presented in part by. Hank the Realtor from Vortex Realty, serving Bernie, Texas, and New Braunfels in San Antonio, Texas. Oh, Hank! Oh, it's that Hank! Hank sent me a text message this morning. Hey, I heard the show on Monday where that guy oh, no. emailed you and said that he was going to scream, come on now, Hank, while he was in throes of passion with his old lady. I thought, uh-oh, Hank's upset. He's found the line. Hank loved it. Oh, <laughs> there <laughs> love it. we go. Yes! Love it. Yes! Come on yes! now, Hank! Oh! oh. And then when you get then when you get done, and then when you get done and you get cleaned up, call Hank if you're in the real estate up. business. If you need a real estate agent, yeah, clean yourself up before you go see Hank. I like get to smell it for a while. Well, I mean, you know, yeah, just crust up. But then clean up. And then call then Hank. Then go and call Hank. Yeah. Crust up and call Hank oh, if you're thinking Hank. about selling a house. Uh, and you want to maybe you thought, golly, this market's insane. Maybe we might be able to get a lot of money for this house right now with all of the demand. Let Hank run your comps for free. Mention Thunderdome when you call him. Hank's obviously Thunderdome too, and he'll run the cro- the, the the comps on your house or your property and tell you what it's worth. And so it's like, well, damn, we can get this. Let's go for it. So if you're ready to go forth with selling property, Hank's the man. If you're looking to buy a home, Hank is the man. Vortex Realty is where Hank offices out of. He lives, operates, and works in Bernie, but he serves New Braunfels and San Antonio. Get a free market analysis. No obligations. It is Hank the Realtor, 31121. You can text him to it, 31121. The official real estate agent of Mike Taylor Live is Hank the Realtor. If you need yourself a real estate agent, call, call Hank. Call oh, Hank. Oh, Jim. No, I mean Hank. 
What else today? Erica Newman is in the news. Why should I know that name? Tiger's ex girlfriend. Oh, there we go. We have a development. It's a big news day. <laughs> pretty things are shaking. Pretty chock full of pretty, some pretty salacious headlines here. Erica Newman has dropped her lawsuit uh, she without gave up. prejudice she, in the lawsuit against Tiger Woods. Basically, the after the third or fourth time, the judge called bullshit on her claims. Her lawyers have told her to take it. Well, yeah, you got to stop. This Biatch. girl, this is the chick here that uh, Tiger. This is probably the most. It's probably the most. Whatever, however legitimate Tiger can be in a relationship with somebody, which is you know, it's Tiger and she was. A, they were pretty close there. It seemed for a couple of years. You know, it seems like it's his most substantial relationship post. Elon. Elon. Yeah, because he was just rolling through whores and sluts and girls of the night there for a while. Well, you know. as long as he wasn't paying for them, then well, you can call him that. He's Tiger, man. And the shit he's done is crazy. But nonetheless, that seemed to be a legitimate relationship, at least for a little while. And you thought, well, maybe you know, Tiger's gotten older and he's settling down. His body's gone to hell with all the accidents and injuries and stuff he's undergone. And maybe, you know, his kids are getting older. He's got a daughter that's approaching teen years. You don't want your teenage daughter seeing you be a hoe dog all over the country like that. <laughs> oh, dog. A hoe dog. <laughs> Quit being a hoe dog. I haven't heard that. <laughs> Quit being a little hoe dog. You know your mama raised you better and than I that. I thought, you know, Tiger's four or five years from the senior tour already. He's just, he's the old man now on tour that he's, he's just the old wizard, you know. And... Maybe this is legit and she seems cool. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I don't know, they broke it up and she's filed the lawsuit. And Tiger was such a pussy, he didn't even have the guts to dump her in person and, or didn't even text her. He's not even told her, as far as I know, he's not even communicated with her once since they broke up late last year. He had a minion lie to her. No bullshit. One of Tiger's handlers shows up at the house in Jupiter, Florida. She was just hanging out. Hey, Tiger wants you to take a trip with him. He does. Yeah. Oh, well, here. Where are we let, going? Let me grab my stuff. How many days are we and, staying? You know, she was confused because it's like, well, where is he? Well, he's out of town, blah, blah, blah. But he, he wants you to meet him in a certain town. Oh. It was kind of like setting up a, a hit, an assassination in the mob. Very, it's exactly what it sounds like. Why don't you take a drive with us? Yeah, yeah let's go for a ride. Let's go for a ride. And go home and get your fucking shine box. So this whoever handler of Tigers convinces her to get in the car, and we're going to go to the airport, and you're going to go meet Tiger or go wherever he is or whatever. It's almost this like, is insane. It's like some asshole that drives his dog out to the middle of a backwoods country road. Throws and just, a piece of bologna. Yeah, and, just, and then drives away. That's basically what Tiger did to his girlfriend. <laughs> this poor, this guy drives this chick. They're on the way to the airport. They get to the airport, and he then he tells her there is no trip. You're kicked out of the house. We're cha we've changed the locks since we left. Don't even try to as come back. As soon as they drove off, the maids all changed the locks. She's like, wait, what the fuck? They're like, no, you're, we're done. Here's Uber money. Have a nice life. Here's your gift basket. While that is extremely shitty and the most pussified thing, and it's so tiger. That's pretty on character. To do. Yeah. There's no lawsuit there. She's pissed. And, and by the way, during the relationship, she was forced to sign an NDA. Yeah. And she tried to get the NDA waived in court in this lawsuit because she wanted to out all these things that Tiger did, told the judge that he constantly sexually harassed there her. There it is. But y'all are dating. Yeah. Well, okay, you can you can still... Stop fucking. No, you can still rape your wife. Shut it doesn't up, matter. Shut up, <laughs> back your no, ass into that hole. It doesn't matter whether you're dating, married, or anything. What kind of bullshit world are we living in? Sexual assault and harassment is still just that. It's garbage. Regardless of title of Where the Where are we at in society? Where are we at? <laughs> I want me some glory. See? Honey. Bingo. Yeah. No, I, that was the part that... Oh God! The only as soon what a as shit bag Tiger as is. Soon, but as soon as she <laughs> went that route, that kind of told me, all right, this is going to be dismissed. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, I mean, you're not you're not going to win harassment, that harassment. Right, get rid of the NDA, which she never, she would have never, none of this would have ever come to light had they not screwed her over that way. Had he just told her, hey, it's Tiger, we're done, that would have been that. But because they do this ridiculous. 
bruise, she got mad. And I understand her getting upset and pissed and sure. like, what the hell? But sorry, baby, you can't get what money. You, yeah, what are you, you gonna, didn't marry him. You don't have his babies. You can be upset, yeah. but you're not going to win the lawsuit. Yeah, you did good. You had Tiger for three or four years, and you got to wear a red shirt and a black hat on Sunday with him. And it was sweet when he won the Masters, and you gave him a big old hug. But you yesterday's news, we on to Cincinnati. You're basically like a 28-year-old <laughs> prospect that gets called up in the dog days of September. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty you, much. You get, you get 13 days in the big <laughs> leagues, but your career is about to be over after yeah, this season. you're done. All right, who's thinking about upgrading their home or wondering how much you can afford if you decided to go get a new house or a different one or whatever? You need to see how much you can get. You need to go get pre-qualified with a mortgage company. And to get pre-qualified, you get pre-qualified with the official mortgage company of Mike Taylor Live, Brad Hardwick. As we all talk about every day on this show, home values have gone way up significantly over the years. And maybe you're in need of some equity. Uh, maybe you already have some equity and you want to have it pay off. And you need to pay off some other debts, put some cash in your pocket, and move on from your house. Good time to do it now, and the best man to call is Brad Hardwick at Hardwick Mortgage at 500-3835, 210 area code, of course, 500-3835. If you're looking to purchase new or used manufactured home, maybe, with land that goes with it, maybe you just want to purchase some acreage, the guy to call is Brad Hardwick at Hardwick Mortgage. The website's hardwickmortgage.com. The information is presented for informational purposes. This is not a commitment to lend or extend credit. Information and or dates are subject to change without notice. All loans are subject to credit approval. Other restrictions may apply, and as a result of refinancing, your total finance charges may be higher over the life of the loan. Visit hardwickmortgage.com for more information. It is Hardwick Financial Services, NMLSID 1972012, hardwickmortgage.com, Hardwick Mortgage. Dot com. All right, man. Dr. Chinga Moosis is in here. Mayor, punch the girl I've been trying to date who's having an issue because I'm on the devil's lettuce. <gasps> it's been ingrained in her that it's an abomination. Time to let go of that antiquated thinking. Mm. You're smoking reefers? That is a tough spot to be in that I don't relate to whatsoever because I live with a pothead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she appreciates that. I'm just kidding. We're smokers at our place. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I, I know what to tell you. We just crossed the eight well, billion you know person in this world. Fuck off. Yeah, yeah, you don't. It sucks. It's that's a deal breaker. It sucks because yeah, I mean, it sucks if she's just not going to bend at all. It's not like you're trying to make her smoke. Well, too. hold on. How much will she bend? Because I okay. might be back okay. in. I oh. might quit. Oh, well, <laughs> might now quit who's smoking? Now it. who's the Gen X asshole? Whoa! Wait, I'm asking. Quite, I'm trying to get a better understanding of the situation here. Like so Steph, I can give Steph's good advice. never told you stop smoking, I'm sure. She probably no. she probably would like you to. She if you did, she'd probably be happy about it. What but she's not in there saying, you don't need to be smoking. That's a sin. She would like me to stop smoking tobacco products. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. C cigarettes. Yeah. I don't mean I don't even think I don't even call my, weed's not even smoking. That's not I don't even that's smoking is cigarettes. Marijuana. Pretty much. So when I say smoking, I'm talking about cigarettes. Weed is God's nature grass. You ever suck some dick for marijuana? <laughs> okay. No. No. God's people don't do that. Grass. I don't understand. I'm not look, do not do anything in your relationship because me and Puma said so. I'm just giving you my opinion, dude. Um, but my opinion's spot on. If she's if she thinks that marijuana is immoral or wrong, y'all are not on the same wavelengths mentally. You have a different moral code from this woman because if she's that hardcore against marijuana, which is silly, when half the states in this country have now legalized it and the other half are dumb and need to get on with the shit already, which hopefully they all are, including this one. Um, if she's that morally against it, then... How you are know, you ever going to agree? On anything. Yeah. There's going to be other things that come along. If she's willing if she's willing to convince herself as a grown person that marijuana is somehow immoral and wrong, then I just don't know how y'all are ever going to. You're never going to have, you're never going to have this the symbiosis that required is required to have a long term meaningful relationship. So, no. sorry, bro. And uh, I think the trying to be nice, but that I don't I don't see it working for you, Holmes. I think as get out while you can. As difficult as it may do be, do not make her pregnant. It is 
absolutely okay to have very specific deal breakers. Sure. And yeah. I don't think there's like changing yourself to fit the desires of someone you want to be in a relationship with. That doesn't feel like you're being right. honest to yourself. Correct. And that does not mean that you don't evolve. You don't. There's not osmosis. There's not symbiosis. I'll use that word again. That doesn't mean that, you know, it's kind of like, it's that old, it's like Pulp Fiction. When Jules eats the hamburger. My girl, I'm, my girlfriend's a vegetarian, so that pretty much makes me one. I haven't had a good burger in a long time. What do you got there? The Big Kahuna Burger. Big Kahuna. That's a tasty burger. He's still going to eat hamburgers on occasion, but sure. he wants to respect her vegetarianism, so he probably eats more veggies than he wants to. That's just called compromise. But don't change who you are. You're, don't, don't, and take it from experience. Don't change who you are as a person when you know in your heart this is not who you are. You don't, that's not, it's, gonna, it's only going to fail. It's a matter of when. Completely agree. And all that being said, sure. I mean, if you're smoking a pound a day and just saying <laughs> sitting on your ass on the couch all afternoon, not doing shit. Well, that's different. Maybe she's got a point. Yeah. If there's. Well, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Okay. And on, okay. You're right. And we don't know that. Dr. Right. Chingamosis, how much pot we smoking, <laughs> yeah, bud? And, how, and how, what is it preventing you from accomplishing in life? Right. Then there's that. Is, is she against you smoking weed for other reasons? It's like our, when we talked about gambling last week. Or video games, you know, if you are like Charles Barkley, the report got out one year, a long time ago, where he lost over a million dollars gambling in the casinos in Vegas oh, one year. He must have a problem. And some asshole manager that didn't like him in some casino leaked that to the media. And so there was this big article going around saying Charles Barkley loses $1 million plus in gambling. Oh, Charles has a gambling problem. And he was asked about it later on. Charles is like, yeah, I had a bad year last year. I lost over a million bucks. TNT paid me $8.5 million. So therefore, I do not have a gambling problem. If you're not paying your light bill or your kids are not eating because you're smoking pot, well, then you have issues. It's not the pot that's the problem. It's you abusing it. It's it's the yeah. abuse. So yeah. if there's that, then maybe she's got a point. But I'm just going to assume that she's just being, she's just a weirdo. This is, and she has a strange moral code that needs to be overhaul this is one of the most ironic turn of events i've experienced in my life what's the that? last big relationship i was in yeah. before the roommate Let's see college girlfriend yeah we're dating for a while both partook in substances yeah she had a moment of awakening immediately was like no i'm okay if you do it but just don't do it around me or do it when, you know, before we hang out or whatnot. And I was like, uh, okay, that's, that's, I kind of like you. So I'm going to try this. Right. Yeah, but it's, that's not ideal. No. And so every time when we, when I would pick her up, the first thing she would say is well, when's the last time you smoked. And finally after, uh, okay, see, yeah, that was it. And so I, <clears throat> yep. we, I broke it off amicably. We're fine. Moving on. Right. That was a mature thing to do. Correct. And you did her a favor six months later. Mm hmm. She marries our former drug dealer. <laughs> Still married with kids today. Well, good for her. A very happy family, and yeah. it worked out better for everybody. Good. But uh, yeah, she realized real quickly how insane those demands were and completely changed her tone. Well, worked out for you. It worked, worked out, out for, for everybody. Worked out for Stephanie. It worked out for her and the drug dealer. And it worked out for the, All right. for the dope man. Thank you so much to the great Johnny Moore. It yes. is not every day you get to talk to a retired Spur, and that was pretty, what I mean by that is a Spur with his number retired at the top of the AT&T Center, and that was kick-ass. Thank you, Double Zero. That was I awesome. I think that's the first time I've talked to a retired number Spur for longer than 10 seconds. Mm. Uh, for me, Avery Johnson, because I covered him when he was the coach of the Mavs. Oh, so yeah, technically, yeah, okay. And I was covering the Mavericks, and we that, were talking about, count. you know, you know, we were talking about Steve Nash and shit like that, and forcing Dirk to play on the low post. Yeah, and your thoughts on your idiot owner wearing an "It's Avery's Team" T-shirt to make it even way. Anyway, that's enough. Anyway, or so that time Avery, he moved the hotel in Miami, or that time, or the other time, a Avery got so sick of that shit. <laughs> Real fast. Uh, so I can't blame technically him. Avery, but never like one on one talking Spurs basketball. Right. That was that was good. That I've was met great. Sean. Well, yeah, I've, I've met Sean Elliott. Uh, Sean's number is retired, right? Yeah, yeah. I've, yep. I've met Sean, but never like that. So that was that was a treat, and I appreciate uh, Johnny for popping on, and thanks for LG and. 
to Johnny's wife for making sure that Johnny got on today Perfect. <laughs> without a glitch. Love it. That's something I would like. If y'all have me on at the house, like I've done podcasts myself. I'm just, I'm just, I didn't want to be fair to Johnny. I've had, I've done three or three podcasts from my apartment. Nina has to get me signed up all the no time. No way. <laughs> Who could have guessed that? Just to make sure. I've gotten a lot better at this YouTube. You have gotten a lot better. We're done. I get paid to talk, man. So I just, I talk good. That's what I do. I don't get paid to push buttons. That's right. I talk good. That's it. We're done. Thank you to Johnny. Thank you to DJ LG. Muchas gracias to Puma. We'll see you boys in here manana for Fart Drop Thursday on Mike Taylor Live. Later. This program was made possible by contributions from viewers and listeners like you. Thank you.